I'm Ashley Chancellor, and this is Collateral Gaming. Welcome to Collateral Gaming, the only video game podcast that matters, where we focus on good games, bad games, and everything else in between in the world of gaming. I am recording straight from somewhere in South Texas, and this is a Let's Play game commentary on The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. (laughs) Um, This is in coordination with our upcoming season premiere on Majora, so uh, definitely, definitely, definitely wanted to do a Let's Play on this, and, and particularly because it's my favorite Zelda game. Well, right along with Breath of the Wild. So a fact I've mentioned before, but I am super stoked to be getting into it again. I mean, obviously, I've been playing the game on my own. Um, I've been trying to do my shot at the three-day challenge, and I do want to do a live stream on that at some point once I know that I've got it down. But this is actually going to be a full walkthrough. You know, like an actual... uh, And I think we'll shoot for 100%. um, At the very least, getting all masks so we can get the uh, the Fierce Deity mask. And at that point, you know, it's just a couple heart containers. I may not film all of it, but in any case, yeah. No, we'll, we'll... We'll, um, we'll film all of the masks and shit, but, um, I don't suppose that really there's anything else we need to talk about, so I'm just gonna get right into it. Um, I've already started a stay file here. Like, I haven't started it, but, like, I, I named it, right? So, um, we're gonna go with Link. Now, normally, um... You know, I go by Scruffy on my Zelda save files, and I, I struggle with it. I was like, should we do, like, C Gaming or something? But that's not really a person's name, so... Look, okay, we're gonna go with Link. Um, this file has never been loaded before. I mean, the, the cutscene ran for a couple seconds, and that's because I was recording. It's just that I had some technical difficulties. So anyway, we are starting over from Square Run C. Zero rupees, three hearts, no heart pieces, no masks. Brand new file. We'll just go. We'll go with the default link. I think. I think that that's that's what we're gonna do. In the land of Hyrule, there echoes a legend, a legend held dearly by the royal family that tells of a boy, a boy who, after battling evil and saving Hyrule, crept away from the land that made him a legend. Done with the battles he once waged across time, he embarked on a journey, a secret and personal journey, a journey in search of a beloved and invaluable friend. God, these run so fast. I'm just going to have to, like, you know. A friend with whom he parted ways when he finally fulfilled his heroic destiny and took his place among legends. <laughs> All right. And then we hear Navi, so that that's the cue that we're, they're talking about Navi, right? But then you hear, then you know that, that that's not actually Navi. We'll see that in a second. So, we're in the Lost Woods, right? Gotta love those Nintendo 64 graphics. I mean, God, this game is over 20 years old, right? Just about. It's like exactly 20 years old, I should say. I mean, it's the perfect time to talk about it on the podcast, I'll say that. You know, what? When did... What month did Majora's come out? Last month. Nope, came out in Maybe we're even pretty close to the, uh... No, we're not. <laughs> no, it did. It came out in North America in October. So we're actually pretty much near the, uh... Anniversary. That's pretty cool. For North America. Not for Japan. Japan. 
All right, so this is the Skull Kid. Now, I'm going to try to not spoil things in advance. Um, we're just going to kind of watch this together, so that's the idea. Um, and the good thing about Majora's Mask is the game was I meant, you know, ideally to be cut into segments of three-day cycles. So we'll actually have a pretty good format. And there's no voice dialogue, so that might make things easier, huh? Anywho, um, so yeah, about every, we'll, we'll cut and we'll, we'll probably play like once every three day cycle. So this will just be that initial three day cycle where you're playing as Deku Link, Deku Link, Deku, I don't know. Well, I think in the Japanese. Let's go. I mean, when it's just Deku, it's not so wrong. Let's look it up. Let's look it up. Katakana. Yep, it's, 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 it's Deku. Why? Because I know how to read Japanese katakana, and I know how that's pronounced. So you're welcome. Basically, if anyone's ever confused about a Zelda pronunciation, they don't have to be. Because all they have to do is, is read it in the original Japanese. And in Japanese, syllables have very specific pronunciations, so... Not only that, but if it's meant to invoke an English-sounding word, then it's it's going to be transcribed phonetically rather than transliterated. You know, that's that's just a shit that I don't have to do detail about. It. But anyway, we're going to collect rupees. Why? Because the, the best thing you can do during the um, initial three-day segment is collect rupees. Especially if you're doing a 3 day challenge, it is necessary. But we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be playing through the game as it was meant to. And I'm thinking to myself, should I cut those? And I'm like, eh. Okay. Kind of like acid, right? Got all these little. <laughs> it feels like a like a yellow submarine kind of deal, right? There's the skull kid. Oh no! It's pretty heartbreaking, right? Try not to hit buttons on this. Because the trigger buttons, well, at least the right trigger button does completely different things than you want it to do. The left trigger button, though, that's your, uh, that's your Z targeting. You know, in this version, the, um, Controls are left exactly the way that they were, as far as like the on-screen controls. So it's pretty intuitive, but you do have to figure out a couple things. Like, okay, your VR button actually pulls out the restore point menu, which we're probably not gonna try not to make use of. Here. Other than you know. Reloading our, our save file, I suppose. We'll, we'll reload our restore points, but I mean, we'll play this game the, main, the way that it's meant to. I will probably create backup restore points, though, just in case, just in case, and just to make it easier to reload things. Now, if you don't know how Majora's Mask worked works. It doesn't really have a saving system, at least not this version, 
like the uh, most Zelda games do. Um, basically, the only time you can save is when you reset time, right? I don't think that's much of a spoiler because that's the premise of the game, right? So when you reset time, you save the game and you play and you move on. That's the only way to truly save. It. Now, there are these owl statues in the game that allow you to save and quit, but uh, you have to quit. And once you reload that save file, then it deletes it deletes the save. Loaded, so it's kind of a, um, you know, it's just a, you know what, I really um, can't finish this cycle, I gotta go, you know. Hopefully we won't really need to make use of those, but if we have to, if we have to cut a, get, you know, a segment short, we'll use it. Ugh. Now the Japanese version didn't even have that feature, so... All right. <laughs> so yeah, you get to play the majority of the segment as Deku, and so you really don't. Um, you gotta you get used to these controllers. So we're not gonna become highly unlike again until the end of this three day cycle when we reset time. So we're gonna get used to this for the rest of this playthrough. Um, I may record back to back. I may go ahead and start recording. You know what I want to do, but we'll see, we'll see how we feel. Nuts, which um, I have found to be more useful. I don't think I used them a whole lot in my first playthroughs of this game, but I found to be infinitely more useful over time. I think they're more useful in this game than they were in Ocarina. So, but especially in three day uh, three day challenges, God, if you can, you can just freeze enemies and jump attack them. It's... So there's a secret about this little guy this tree looking thing and I don't think that I'm gonna going to uh spoil that right now. But there there is a secret behind this guy and we will find that out. Looks sort of like this tree. The way you look right now looks sort of like this tree. It's almost all dark and gloomy. Almost like it could start crying any second. How sad. See? So that's there's a hint right there about what's going on. Um, and then there's a... There's a hint midway through the game, or I would say in the first quarter of the game, when you get to the woodfall area. Um, and then there's a clue in the, in the credits. It kind of pieces it all together. And it's, it's pretty clear exactly what happened. Borrowed that little uh, tilting... Uh, hallway from Ocarina's forest hallway. This soundtrack is beautiful. I love this, this particular song. <laughs> and there he is, Mr. Creep himself. The heavy mask salesman. I know the way to return you to your former self. <laughs> I just love the way that this guy moves, you know? I'm a very busy fellow, and I must leave this place in three days. Dude, it's not because you're a busy fellow. <laughs> happening in three days. Alright, let's do it. So we are in Clock Town. Now we can't invert time. Oh, we 
can't slow down time with the inverted song of time, so we, but that's okay, because there's really not a lot we have to do besides um, collect rupees, and um, yeah. I guess I'll show you guys what I like to do at the beginning of every 3D cycle. There's at least three heart pieces that you can get um, right away. There's only three that you can get in the 3D cycles. You can't complete a full heart container. But I do this every time I do a three-day challenge because it means that I only need to get one more heart piece. Alright, let's do it. I like how the, the 3D version you know, the sacred sword through the different this sort of sounds sacred or whatever. Um, in the, I like how the 3D version, though, they, uh, she said, I don't know where the Great Fairy lives, and so you have to ask around. And that's, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Iconic, okay. By the way, instead of getting the map bots and maps in advance like I always do, I think I'll I'll get them at the discounted rates. Guys, <laughs> nice bunny. All right, so we're gonna talk to the great fairy. Oh no, the great fairy. Now there's one thing that I do like to do real quick while I'm in this area. So we're going to do it before we run out of time before it becomes the next day. Alright, we're going to do the three days at the Deku Scrub Playground. So, every day you come here and there's a new event. You can only do it as a Deku Scrub. But this is one of the heart pieces you can get from here. And it's also a great way to make one. Um, again, in the, this version, though, the 3DS version, they replace the rewards with uh, fishing hole passes. But at least you collect the rupees here, which kind of recoups the cost of playing. I think it exactly recosts the Koopa plant, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, basically we just have to collect all these rupees. It's actually pretty easy. It's not that hard. You'll get it. Um, I mean, the first time you do it, it's kind of difficult. You really do figure it out. Um, you get the hang of it. Also, you get the feel for Deku Link. Um, the 3DS version has a nice little uh, pull down the R button to look below you and get like kind of like a reticule of what you're doing. Can I make that a little I think so. Yep, there we go. And so you can see exactly where you're going to land, which is nice. It's a good quality of life improvement. But if you know what you're doing, see, I, I have the exact same number of rupees I came coming in. We'll deposit in the bank so we don't make, don't go over. We only need to deposit 200 rupees in the bank to get the big one, so we should be able to do that. So see, right now we can only hold 99 rupees, so... Gotta 
find the great fairy straight away. Characters are saying no, no skipping. Uh, see, uh, I, I should actually be really like, I should put this piece on my eyes. That's it's like habit of, for me to just kind of skip the dialogue at this point because I know what they're saying. I'll slow it down for you guys. Sorry about that. Okay. And my phone just went off. Fine now. Okay, that's good. Alright. Alright, so I got this. It's already one o'clock. In game. See that clock along the bottom? So if anyone's not familiar with when Joy's Mask works, um, which we're about to find out, but the game is the game is on a time limit, so it's always on the clock. So um, basically, like the mask salesman said, um, we have to beat the game and we have to do all this within three days. But there's another reason than what he's saying. Magic power, so now we can shoot bubble blasts. Nice. Alright. The man who lives in the observatory outside town may know the Skull Kid's whereabouts, but be careful. There we go. So, I like how this game gives you barely any help. You kind of have to just figure this stuff out. But, kind of that mystery is lost because I know exactly what to do. Alright, let's so use this. Pop the balloon, great. Talk to Jim. See, so hideout that leads to the observatory. So, if you're paying attention, you'll know that's where you need to go. Are you ready? Yes. This is much easier in this version than it is in the first version. Right. I've been playing a lot of this version of the game, so... They make a note about the deck being able to do this, and I just realize that what this tattle say. Okay. Thanks. I will say, the coolest bomber location is right here, and they removed it from the 3DS store. I think this is the one they should have kept, because this is the, quite possibly the coolest one. He's just ready to take this right now. My man. Right. And then there's this one. 
They changed some of the location. But this one is still very rough. Just not the Pepe guys. I mean, it makes sense. They wanted to have one in each area of the you could say. Having not, not being able to control the camera. Alright, let's do it. See how it's already getting towards evening? Alright. Now the other two are nice clock. I see in the 3DS version, there's one in the south, one in the laundry pool. There's only one in the east, I think. There's still two in north. Oh, there's only this one. Okay. Two. Yeah, that sounds right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. There's only one in north, one in south, one in east, one in west, and one in the one people. Yeah. Now this one, there's two in north and two in east. One in west. Are you ready? Okay. You ready to write this down, guys? Now this code changes on every, from every game. 51432. I don't think I actually need to write that down. 51432. Uh, you know what? Let's write it down for subs subsequent playthroughs. Alright, five, one, four, three, two. Okay, good. Now what I didn't know is that the Woods of Mystery and Pinnacle Rock are always the same directions. I thought the I thought the Woods of Mystery changed, but it was like the same every place. But we'll do it the way. Five, one, four, three. Deposit some rupees in the direction. Why? And we should have done it while we were in West Glockton. Night of the first. Day. Why? Because we're about to hit 99, and there's some good rupees up in this upcoming section, so. We don't want to waste our rupees. See, in this version, the bank is in West Clocktown, right by the shops, which kind of makes sense. But, in the 3DS version, the bank is in South Clock Town, right by the Owl Statue, which is also slightly moved from its location. They're both behind the clock tower. Which is nice because, you know, it's also nice because you can just warp and just put it in the bank. But, or right whenever you uh, reset time. So there's good and there's bad things about the 3DS remake, and I'll probably bring up a lot of the differences throughout the changing around of Clock Town is a good change. Changing the bomber's locations is kind of eh. I think it's nice because it adds a little bit more challenge, I suppose. And for people that are returning players, you know, they have something a little bit different than what they've done before, but anywho. Um, so, quick note about the bank. And this is what's really interesting. This is why the bank is good. Alright? Because one thing that you think is that every, whenever you reset time, you lose everything. Right? Of your inventory. Now, you keep items, like dungeon items, but you don't hold on to rubies or bombs or arrows or decker nuts. You know, you hold on, you don't hold on to anything that has any kind of um, count. You know, like ammunition type things or, or, or currency. You know? So, and there's a lot of people who, surprisingly, didn't actually know this, and just always reset rupees, I guess. But anyway, I'm gonna avoid the spatula. Anyway, um... So, there's a lot of people that, yeah, didn't realize that. Anyway, so the bank actually keeps track of it. 
magic there. So you think that you lose all of your rupees, and you do, but if you deposit them in the bank, and then reset time, the bank still keeps track of how many rupees you deposit. Now how that works, that doesn't make any sense, but my theory is... My theory is, is that that stamp that the banker puts on you records exactly how much money is in the bank, and that's how they're like, that's why they don't, the banker doesn't remember your, their name until they check the stamp. Oh, you're scruffy, and this is how much you owe. I, that's my personal theory, is that it's all in the stamp. And so the bank has, you know, a set amount of money in it, and they're just, they're giving you free money, I guess. <laughs> Put money in the bank so you can pull it out when you reset time. So, and maybe I might forget one of these playthroughs if I reset time. Because I've done it before. Only a gaze into the telescope, yes. This is such a random sequence of events that I'm not sure how anyone got by without a, uh, like, a walkthrough. Like, you literally have no objective. You don't know, I mean, you have an objective. You know that you're supposed to get to him, but you don't know how to get to him. You kind of just have to talk to people and figure things out and use clues. Okay, I gotta go to the observatory because the Great Fairy said to go there. Oh, well, if I pop this balloon, then this guy tells me that there's an observatory. So, and then you go to it, and then you're like, okay, well, the observatory led me here. You still don't know why you're going here. You don't know why you're collecting a moon's tear, but if you talk to people, you'll figure out, oh, oh, there's someone who needs a moon's tear. I don't know what good it's going to do to have it, but to trade it, but, but you see, so that's what I like about it, is that you kind of just, especially this first segment, is you figure out what you're doing. Alright. Well, normally we would warp out of here, but we can't do that. What I like about this is it's a good farming opportunity here. These always have rupees. Always have, they never run out of rupees. Every time you reload that area, they, then they come back. Well, I guess that applies to reloading all areas, but this one's particularly easy to do. Also, if anyone isn't aware, there are a few different silver, or there's a few different rupee locations I always get every gameplay, and one of these is here. I can't get to it right now, because I can't, I don't have bombs, and I don't think I can hop over there. Maybe could. But, if you go over there, yeah, there's a silver over there. I can't get to the other one either, but there's one to the left of here, which some people think you have to have the bunny hood to get, but you don't. You just have to roll jump. Another change that uh, Majora's Mask brought that wasn't in Ocarina is roll jump carries more momentum. Uh, spinning before you Deku hop carries more momentum. Anyway. So we've done almost everything we need to do now at this point for the first three-day cycle for story purposes, believe it or not. Um, there really isn't anything else. But, we're gonna get, like I said, we're gonna get some heart pieces. Now, in this version of the game, this guy always takes forever. You always have to play this cutscene every time you pass this area. One of the good changes in the 3DS remake is that they, after the first time you watch it, they skip that cutscene, and a few others, they may go faster. Okay. So I, I would actively avoid touching this Deku flower, because if you get close to it, you always play that stupid cutscene. Alright, yeah, yeah. Deku flower included. Alright, sure thing, bud. What are you going to do with a land title, dude? Well, nothing in this playthrough. But, well, we're going to do something with it, and you'll see. But, 
it's going to be useful. See, this title for the spot should be in high demand. This, there's actually kind of a side quest running around. Um, by trading these title deeds around, um, you trade one title deed for another, and each one of them gives you a piece of heart. And then at the end, um, you end up with a golden rupee, which, come to think of it, is really not the best reward for all of that. Really, it's the heart pieces you get along the way, but it's a it's pretty good. So each new area you go, there is another there's another business scrub with a Deku flower who will who wants to move somewhere else. And he'll take the the title dude that you have. And they'll actually move there. So you, you, you buy these you buy these flowers and, and, and you sell them. It's it's real estate. <laughs> but you trade one title deed for another is the way that it works. And then at the end, instead of trading it for a title deed, he gives you a golden rupee. Now the door opens at midnight. So this is where we need to go to get to the top. So now we kind of know what we're doing and we figured out why we're getting here. This Deku flower took us up here. But this only opens at midnight on the final day. So now we have time to kill. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to get our second heart piece real quick. Remember that title deed I said that's basically useless to us at the moment? Well, there's one thing you can do. And this particular side mission is usually a waste of paper. And so usually if you trade something for it, you know, you're you're actually screwing up another side quest. But in this case, we don't have anything else to do with it. It's the perfect opportunity to give it away. So here I'll introduce you to one of the most infamous characters in the Zelda series. Question mark, question mark, question mark. That's his name. He doesn't have a name. They call him question. He's a hand he's a hand in a toilet. He wants toilet paper. So we gave him the title deed. This fell down here. And that's really gross, but you know what? We got a bizarre. Alright, perfect. Easy stuff. There's a benefit to knowing this game really well and knowing where to catch all the extra stuff. Okay. So, and now we really do have time to kill. So basically, all we need to do is collect rupees um, or skip forward time. Which I may go ahead and do, because well, right now we've only got two hours to tell, so we'll just we'll travel to where we're going next, but we may end up skipping a lot of time. If we were doing a three-day challenge, though, we would be we would be effectively using this time to collect rupees. We wouldn't waste a single minute of it. But since we're not, I'm not too concerned. About it. Perfect. Dawn of the second day. This one is actually the hardest one, day two, believe it or not, not day three. Day 3 is meant to be the hardest, but this one is a bit the hardest. Why? Because the platform's all new. You gotta catch it. Day 3 mixes it up with horizontal and vertically moving platforms, so it's, again, it's not as hard, actually. Some of them are easier. Oof. How'd you like that timing? Ooh. Let's roll off the No! Too bad, you're done. Kyle, Lee, I was at the last one. That's not fair. I hate how they... 
Best now to wait till the end game to do that. But... Oof. Oh, that was close. No! Really? That was not fair. I think we can all agree like, that that was kind of stupid. So now we just wasted more rupees and more time. And time is rupees. And I just messed up the time. Get to those 200 rupees. I think. That's what we should do. We should spend our time collecting enough for at least the first wallet upgrade. After that, I'm going to be concerned about it. Alright, so we're at to day two. Now I don't have to don't have any commitments until day three. There's a glitch that we can use if we wanted to, but we're not going to do that. This is, I'm not a glitch type of person. There's a way to get out. another heart piece that way. I lied. There is a way to do it. But ideally, you don't want to. The best way to do that is to get the money. We could play the lottery too, but we need to know what the actual numbers are. But you can cheat the lottery because you can reset time. <laughs> You'll know what, what what's going to win the lottery. It's kind of a way to cheat and make movies. Actually, there's no reason to skip time because we're almost to the night. Right, 
then. No, yeah, because we'll want to skip to the, the third day. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to collect the like, until the second night. We'll skip ahead to the third day. I'm not going to spend an entire 12 hours just flipping rupees. I, I don't think it's worth it. What we'll do... Let's farm all these. Alright. Nice. song that's sorely missing from the Ocarina song, but pops up quite frequently in this game, believe it or not. They use Sarah's song quite a bit. Dawn of the final day. Here we go. Alright. How about that? See how quickly we got to the second one? No, we're not going to dance again. Alright. Um, sure. I know what this is already, but just so you guys can see. So if you play this that strange song backward, you can play the song in time backwards, you can slow the flow of time. If you play each note twice in a row, you can move half a day forward through time. It's our hidden songs. They don't show up on the list. Now they do in the 3DS version, but not in this one. Um, and the song of double time actually works better. Or works, yeah, works, it works differently in the um, 3DS version. Instead of having this, being able to skip forward half a day, which is functionally similar to the way the Scarecrow works just now, you can um, you can actually pick a time. I, I love, that's another good improvement in 3DS frames is the ability to skip to a specific hour. And that's well worth it. And the reason why is that in this game, there are times where you... There are certain things that happen at specific times. Because the whole game runs on a clock. Every NPC in this game runs things on a schedule. And we'll see that when we open up the Bomber's Notebook. I'll show you guys. But yeah, every single character in this game runs on a schedule. And so, um, certain things happen at certain times. So, in this game, there's going to be some waiting. There's going to be some time where, okay, this thing happens specifically at this time, so we're going to sit and wait for it to happen, right? Which isn't ideal. 3DS version allows you to skip forward to specific times, which is good. You don't, there's no more waiting, because, let's face it, you know, some people, there are, I've heard a couple people complain and say that it removes something, but it doesn't. Nobody likes waiting. It's not a good, it's not a good, um... It's not challenging. It's like false difficulty. Okay, see how I said that they switched it up, it's half and half? And that actually, believe it or not, makes it easier. Although I think they run a little bit faster, so maybe I'll take that back and say that it's not necessarily easier. Vertical ones are much, much easier to catch. Obviously a pro, and pros can't play here. Take this and don't come back. <laughs> Alright, so for three days of gaming, we got a piece of heart. That's good. Ah, it's Link! Hi! <laughs> and they do that every time you come back, um, you know, the rest of the cycle, which is great. Um, 
So there you go. Piece of heart. Piece of three, three pieces of heart that you can get in the first cycle. Anybody ever need a walkthrough on that? Here's a walkthrough on that. No, you can't get that one. And it's so tantalizing. It's right there, but you can't get it. I've tried. I have heard that it's possible if you're really good to climb up the slide. I've never managed to do it. So, and even then, how are you gonna... Deku Link can't jump that far. There's no way. Some people use the glitch through the guard. I think it's an East Clock now. There's a glitch that you can use to walk backwards through a guard. And, um, some hundred people use that to get their fourth heart container. I think the fourth piece of heart, I think that's cheating. I don't like it. I'm not gonna do it. Um, like I said, technically the Postman minigame actually could be done um, within this cycle, but I don't really think it's intended to. I'd rather do it the way that makes sense. Um, actually, we don't need to deposit yet. We need to make more money. And we're not going to bother skipping time until we really have enough money. So far, the most lucrative place actually is the. Let's see, it was 62. Actually, we may have enough now, yeah. Because that means we need 38. You can also talk to the stockpot here. To move time forward, but we haven't needed to. We've literally been busy enough to, we haven't really needed to do that. But you can use Granny to move forward two hours or to move until the next morning. No matter what time of day you're at, she will move to the next morning. Um, I'm gonna go to West Clock Town. The reason that's useful. Well, yeah, you need to skip time somewhere. It's not really that useful, though, because it's only useful during this cycle. Afterwards, you've got the song of double time, you just got to learn twice, which is easier than walking all the way over to her ass and doing that, so... Kind of useless. But the Scarecrow is a good way to skip time in this cycle. It teaches you how to do it once you get the Aquaman. Granny's a good time. If you're not trying to look for ru for rupees and hearts, and you just want to literally skip, it's Granny to do it. Her two-hour skips are useful in the end game, though. Like I said, because you can't, you can't. Um, I remember doing that, using that, because in order, because I don't want to. You can't play the song in double time. It skips ahead half a day, unlike in the 3DS version. What's this you've already saved up? Perfect. Got an adult wallet. Okay. So now we can hold 200 rupees, which is good. That means every cycle we've got, we can, um, we can hold 200 rupees deposit. Which is good because at the beginning of every cycle, we're going to be going to be getting two. We are going to be getting 200 rupees deposit. Before we do anything. Alright, what do you guys think? It's four o'clock. I don't suppose there's actually any real reason to uh skip time at this point. We'd only skip ahead two hours and then we still have to wait till twelve o'clock. So not And I don't think Granny works on the right day. In this case, I'm not that worried. The, I'm not gonna be that damn lazy. Require us waiting for. Require us skipping ahead two hours. I, I might. It's not the right. Like I said, there's something that specifically needs to be done at a certain time. I don't think I'm gonna do it here. I don't think I'm gonna do it here. 
Actually, <laughs> screw it. I think that works. If it works on the final day, I don't know. I want to say that maybe Granny doesn't work on the final day. And that she's not there, but... And that they've already moved on the final night. We'll see. She she won't do the Until Morning story, I know that. Otherwise it would kill you. Or does she? Do you have the option? <laughs> and then you die. That would be great. By the way, yeah, time runs out. Um, you do die. I guess we haven't really talked to enough people to actually see what's going on here. Yeah, Granny's not here the final night. Darn. I figure she evacuates, so yeah. Um, but if you guys haven't noticed, right? It's one of those things that I guess you kind of have to take in. The moon is getting closer. The moon's crashing. Everybody knows it. It's going to happen. And if I spent more time talking to people, they kind of reveal that throughout. Um, unfortunately, most of these conversations are useless, and I know they're useless to people, but it does give you a sense of what's going on. And basically, this whole area opens up, you know what I mean? You get to see the three-day cycle within this first cycle, you know? That's what's kind of nice about this. It's almost got kind of, it's almost it's got an open world feel in a Zelda game that prior to games being like really open world like they are now. Of course, for its time, Zelda was considered open world always, but... Doesn't he usually say if you're gonna fall, fall already? Maybe that's once it hits midnight. Alright, so yeah, we're just waiting at this point. In this case, I think it's nice, because it gives you that time, and it gives you that sense of being able to talk to people and figure out exactly what's going on. It's actually kind of a nice. Almost everyone's evacuated. If I let you out now, you'll just get lost. Oh no. I can't get out. I can't get out. Now we're stuck in we're stuck in clock town for this. Oh man, we have a few rupees, don't we? Why did we make rupees? Did I do it without thinking? When did I go and make rupees? I don't even know. We'll go ahead and deposit them now. It's almost four blocks, so just enough time to head to West Clock Town. Deposit those rupees. And we will. Boom, there we go. See how quickly time moves. Now, obviously, when we play the inverted song of time, we slow down the game time to about half the time, which is good. And I don't think it's possible to play through this time running as quickly as it is. save a whole three-day cycle per dungeon, which is usually a, generally a good idea, but... Alright, let's do it. Why do they have so many... Alright, so, are you gonna do it? Okay. Alright, so, 
Like, so, <laughs> so annoying. Let's get these 15 rounds. Okay. So here we go. The moon is crashing. All that exposition is out of the way within the first three days cycle where you slowly figure out what's going on. That's it. Alright. Hop out here. We can get up there now. Great. We're gonna hop to the top of the clock tower and face the school kid and get our ocarina back. Seems pretty early to be facing this guy, right? <laughs> oh! song of time which Link should have remembered from Ocarina of Time if we're being honest but that's okay Save and return to the dawn the first day. And there we go. That's the end of the first cycle. So we'll go ahead and we'll um, we'll cut it off from here after this little cutscene. I like this too because it shows you the events of the day that happened prior to Link. 
popping up on the dawn of the first day. Dawn of the first day, 72 hours remain. Booyah. Everything has. Start it over. So yeah, that's the basic premise of the game. It's three in-game days, but you can reset time. Did you forget? That's it, you're in stream. Did you completely forget or what? No, that's what I was trying to do this entire time. You're the one that was like, no, that's not going to help us. All right, so that's it for now, guys. We're going to go ahead and hit the uh, pause record. I'm probably going to keep playing. I'm probably going to record this back to back, but this is this is our first segment, and this will be the, um, the first episode. Um, so this, if you like this episode, please, please, please check out Collateral Gaming Video Game Podcast. Go check out our episode on uh, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask once it's out, which it probably should be. I don't, I don't know if I'm going to have released this beforehand, so probably not. But yeah, go check that out. Um, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Um, leave us some feedback. You can find Collateral Gaming wherever you get your podcasts at... Um, whether that is Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Google Play, etc. Um, I had a lot of fun with this. Now, this first episode is free, but the rest of this episode are going to be Patreon exclusives. So, if you want to watch the rest of this Let's Play, you're going to have to give us a little little cheddar cheese, all right? Um, but, I had a fun time. I hope that everyone else has a fun time watching this playthrough with me. And we'll see you next time.